I'm Betsy, welcome back to my kitchen. So this is my all time favorite time of year. It's Christmas time, I love Christmas. I bake so much during Christmas. You'll see on Facebook this holiday party we throw and you'll catch up on that where I make 7,000 desserts. But today, I don't expect you to make 7,000 desserts, but I really want you to try to make your Christmas extra special this year. And I think the one thing that Christmas calls for is decorated cookies. And I am guaranteeing you that some of you went, oh my God, no, I can't make a decorated cookie. Yes, you can. You just have to give it a try and we have to break it down so that it's simple. So when you're making decorated cookies, these are some that I made. I, I've been doing it for years, so let's start with that. So, but what I do is I have probably downstairs, I'm not gonna let you go downstairs, but downstairs I have probably 300 cookie cutters, kind of have a cookie cutter obsession. But what I learned after probably buying 200 of them is that most of them don't make good cookies because the shape just isn't conducive to frosting. So for example, I saw a beautiful cookie cutter in the shape of a mouse and you know couldn't live without it. You can't make a mouse look good in a cookie. It's gray, that's all it is, is gray frosting. So over the years I've gotten really good at picking out cookie cutters that are simple. And I don't use royal icing. Now you could probably make that mouse look really great with royal icing. That's the icing that's real smooth and real thin. In my opinion, it doesn't taste so good. I use buttercream frosting. I want it to look thick and beautiful. So I also want it to be simple and fast because I'm going to make hundreds of these. So I've learned to pick shapes that are easy and you can do that too. If you don't have the cookie cutters, it's worth taking a run to Michael's or I bet you Target sells them, Walmart sells them and pick out some simple shapes. I will tell you the simplest shapes, the Christmas tree, the snowflake is pretty simple to frost. The candy cane, I'm gonna show you how simple that is and it ends up looking just beautiful and tastes great. That's a simple one. This is my new all-time favorite. I found this last year. It makes a little peppermint candy. Now when I show you this one, you're gonna think there's no way you can do it, but I'm gonna show you how to do it. The frosting is swirled. It turns out beautiful. That one's pretty simple. The mitten turns out easy. The stocking, now the ones that get a little harder, Santa Claus gets a little hard. Where do I have Santa Claus? Here he is. Frosting Santa Claus can be a little difficult, but he's cute as can be. And the snowman, as adorable as he is, a little more advanced. I encourage you to do all of these. But I was very careful when I picked these out that these are shapes that we can all do. So I'm gonna show you how to make these. First, we're gonna show you how to do the cutout cookie then I'm gonna show you how to frost them. So first, to make the cutout cookie dough, years ago I found a recipe and I loved it. So I've never changed it. It calls for margarine and that goes against everything I stand for, but the recipe is great, so I've never changed it. And the reason it's great is because my sole goal for that cutout cookie is solely to hold the frosting. I want it to be kinda crisp, and just hold the frosting. I'm not looking for huge amounts of flavor in that cookie. So if you've got one that comes with butter, by all means use it. This is the one I use. So this calls for two cups of softened margarine. Margarine will soften up on your counter a lot faster than butter. You really only need to put it out for maybe an hour, but you can also put it out as long as you want. So two cups of margarine, two and a quarter cups of sugar, Again, I eyeball it. By all means, use the proper measuring cups. Three eggs. And this cookie also, a lot of times when I make cookies, I insist on creaming the butter and the sugar together. Again, this one, I just want it to be the base of the cookie, or the, for the frosting. So I can kind of put a whole bunch of stuff in the, in the bowl at once. It's, it's really forgiving. Three eggs. I probably will go ahead and get that on in mixing. For the cookie dough, I'm using the paddle. When I go to the frosting, I'll show you, I'm gonna use the whip. But for this, just the paddle. Get that all mixed in. I'm gonna add three tablespoons of milk. Nothing special about my milk. We drink fat-free milk here. That's what I'm using. I'm gonna add some baking powder and vanilla. I've got a tablespoon of baking powder. tablespoon of vanilla. I 
And this recipe calls for a dash of salt. I've never really understood what a dash is. Whenever it says a dash of salt, I give it about a quarter teaspoon. Mix that in. And I'm gonna add six cups of flour. And I'm just gonna get that mixed. Now, I would say we're ready to roll this out, but this dough cannot be rolled out. It's way too soft. This dough needs to get put into the refrigerator and rest. Now, the way I do it, I make this, and then several days later, I, I will go and roll the cookie dough out because I tend to do things well in advance, and then when I have time, I'll do it. So I would put this in a Ziploc bag in my refrigerator for several days. If you're in a bind and you want to do it quickly, you need at least three hours, though, to get it into the refrigerator. But just get this dough into the refrigerator and let it set, and we can come back and roll them out in a couple days. I went ahead and did some of this the other day, so I have cookie dough ready to go. Now, like I said, this dough is really just meant to be a cookie to hold my frosting. So, I'm gonna tell you the key here is lots of flour. It doesn't matter if it changes the cookie. I want a crisp cookie. So, to roll out cookies the easiest, we're gonna put lots of flour down. The first one's always the hardest because we're, we don't have a lot of flour down yet and the dough's not really mixed in. You'll see what I'm talking about as I go on. Make sure lots of flour is down. Make sure there's a good amount on top. Then I roll a little. I'm gonna roll it to maybe half inch, third of an inch. I'm gonna put more flour on it, make sure it's completely covered, and I'm gonna flip it onto the flour. This is how I'm guaranteeing it won't stick. Now, I'm gonna keep rolling. I'm also gonna tell you this is my favorite rolling pin. This is actually for fondant, but the reason it's my favorite is it's straight. Some of those French rolling pins are rounded, incredibly hard to make even cookies. This was the best investment I ever made and you can get that at any, at a Michaels or Wilton sells a million of them. Once I've got this rolled out, I'm looking for maybe less than a quarter of an inch and just even. Then I'm just gonna start cutting them out. So what I do, I'll start with the tree. It's actually my favorite cookie. Cut them, push it in, wiggle it a little bit. Make sure it's completely through, cut it, Wiggle it. You're also making sure when you wiggle that it's not sticking. You can tell if it doesn't want to wiggle, it's stuck to the counter. We would probably just pick that up and re-roll it. But I'm just going to cut some. You get a bonus if it actually pops up and you can grab it, because then you can put it right on the sheet. Oh, there, just like that one. That's a bonus. But I would cut whatever shapes I'm doing. Because I've got so much flour down, they come up super easy. And I can just put them right on the cookie sheet. Leave enough room between them because they're gonna spread out just a little. But I would go ahead and do this for all my shapes and make sure I have all the cookies done well in advance. Once, these go in the oven, once I get several pans done, I'll stick these in the oven. Nine minutes is all it takes for me. Now, because this is a pretty thin cookie, you do have to be a little careful. It's gonna to wanna to get brown around the edges. So if you have an oven, it's a little inconsistent, certain there's hot spots, you might want to turn them halfway through or rotate the shelves. Just play with it, you'll see. Also, your bigger cookies, like I have one that's an ornament here, and I've got one that's holly. They're a little bigger. They tend to take a little more time than if I were to make a tiny one. The, the candy cane wants to go a little quicker because it's pretty thin. So the first time you make these, I'm gonna say maybe start at seven minutes. Take a look in there and see what they look like. Once you get an idea, you'll come out with great cookies and we're ready to frost. 